Before considering intubation and mechanical ventilation, providers must first recognize respiratory distress. Respiratory distress can lead to respiratory failure, which is a failure to maintain adequate gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Regardless of cause, patients in respiratory distress need support. Providers of all training backgrounds should understand how to support patients' breathing until intubation and mechanical ventilation are initiated. Remembering the indications for intubation and mechanical ventilation can help providers recognize the respiratory problem and intervene appropriately. Many times, patients have more than one indication for respiratory support, and multiple interventions must occur simultaneously. If the patient is hypoxic, they need supplemental oxygen therapy. The provider must monitor using pulse oximetry and decide which oxygen delivery device is most appropriate for the patient. Remember, adult patients can receive supplemental oxygen by nasal cannula, simple face mask, non-rebreather face mask, or venturi face mask. If the patient is obtunded, is hypoventilating, or is apneic, they will also likely have hypercarbia and may need manual or mechanical assistance with breathing. If the patient is hypercarbic, the cause is usually hypoventilation or apnea. These patients can be obtunded from high levels of carbon dioxide, so providers need to assist these patients with carbon dioxide elimination. This can be achieved using manual ventilation with a bag mask device or by applying non-invasive ventilation support, such as CPAP or BiPAP. If the patient is over-sedated, leading to hypoventilation, then reversal medications should be considered. These patients require supplemental oxygen as well. Patients can have increased work of breathing for many reasons. However, if the increased work of breathing is not sustainable or gas exchange of carbon dioxide or oxygen becomes compromised, providers must lend support to the patient. These patients usually need both oxygenation and ventilation assistance. Additionally, the obstructed airway needs to be opened in order to get oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Providers must also recognize when their interventions are successful or not. If the patient improves with any of the above interventions, then the provider must continue to closely monitor the clinical status. If the interventions fail to correct the problem, the provider must quickly call for help and continue to support the patient until intubation and assisted ventilation can occur. The first step in airway management is recognition of respiratory distress or failure. Once recognized, the provider must quickly apply oxygen and pulse oximetry. This should also initiate a call for help. If the patient is not breathing adequately to maintain oxygenation, then manual assistance of breathing is indicated using a bag and mask device. If the airway has obstruction, then it must be opened using the head tilt and jaw thrust or by inserting an oral or nasopharyngeal airway device prior to bag ventilation. Oxygen flows on the bag mask device should be at 15 liters per minute. If the provider is still unable to ventilate the patient despite previous interventions and the airway provider still has not arrived, then they should consider inserting a supraglottic airway such as an LMA. Once the LMA or laryngeal mask airway is inserted properly, the bag ventilation system can be used to support the patient's breathing. If the respiratory failure is unlikely to resolve quickly, the patient will need intubation and to be placed on a mechanical ventilator for support. In an emergency, opening an airway and assisting a patient's breathing is more life-saving than intubation. The provider must open the airway and maintain a good seal on the face mask to ensure each manual breath enters the patient's lungs. 
Opening the airway involves pulling the mandible or jaw up toward the mask. It does not involve pushing the mask down onto the face. If the provider is unable to maintain a good seal with one hand, they should ask for assistance and perform a two-handed technique. Providers much, must watch for chest rise and fog in the mask to ensure sufficient breath delivery. If you do not see chest rise, the breath is not entering the patient. Inserting an oral airway can also assist in holding the tongue forward during bag mask ventilation. Excessive pressure or ventilation against a closed airway can lead to gastric insufflation and an increased risk for aspiration. LMAs, or laryngeal mask airways, are designed to be inserted without using a laryngoscope or visualization device. These devices are inserted blindly. By design, once inserted, these devices will seat around the larynx and direct the incoming breaths anteriorly toward the trachea.